Um, the crash. The crash. Uh, this one of the highlights of my time in Angola, uh, our short time in fact, because we only got a five day transit visa, um, was um, really the incident. Um, and at the time we were sort of um, on our way to Lubango from Lubito and uh, in, Ang in southern Angola. Um, we, were, we were sort of climbing more up into the hills away from the coast um, and heading south towards the Namibian border. Uh, so this was on um, this was on day three actually and um, uh, it was a lot of, uh, the road had ended um, with peace and it was very dusty um, but at one point the dust sort of cleared, it was a lot more hard packed like earth and Chris and I were, were blasting along quite quickly, um, minding our own business, you know, you know, quite close together as you do when you're having fun and blasting along. Dan was ahead at the time and uh, we came over the hill and there was a scooter in the way, uh, just sort of pooting along going very, very slowly with two people on it. And uh, as you usually do, you, you have to expect the unexpected and it was no different from a lot of times when a scooter will just pull out in front of you for no reason. But they were cruising along and uh, so Chris went to the left and I went to the right past it. But as I approached, I could see that he was pulling back to the right hand side of the road, which is the side that you drive on on Angola. So um, I really shouldn't have been on, up the inside on the right. Um, but it became apparent and there was a, a sort of almost like an embankment of, of, uh, of loose earth stretching away sort of 20 feet or so down to the right hand side of, of, the, of, the, of the piste. And um, I didn't obviously I didn't want to drive off onto that because I would have just really had a, a big accident. So I just gradually the bike, the scooter just pushed me further and closer and closer to the edge where the, the, the earth was piled up before it dropped away. And um, sure enough, the, um, the, pa the pillion, because I think I had my finger on the horn at the time, but the pillion noticed that someone was uh, coming up the inside and turned to look at me in absolute just, just horror in his eyes. Um, and sure enough, we connected. He was trying to, I think he was trying to poke the driver in the ribs and he turned at the last minute, but we connected. And they went down, uh, sort of in a straight line along the edge of the piece. And I went onto the side of the piece, but didn't go down it. Uh, and I flew off and uh, basically landed on my head. Um, I think I sort of, I, I didn't lose consciousness, but I was aware that I'd been hit very hard on the head. And also uh, in the chest, the swell, something had hit me in the chest, which I think now was probably something like the handlebar or the screen or something like that. Although I didn't break the screen, so it's probably not the screen. Um, but anyway, something connected and uh, flew off. And when I came round, the driver, the passenger was just standing there in shock, obviously. And the driver was, um, was, uh, lying on, well, sort of sitting back on the floor and his, uh, his right, uh, no, his left foot was, was bleeding a lot and they looked quite shaken but um, luckily Chris had uh, done a U-turn and come, come back because he was sort of the closest to the accident, Dan was a long way ahead and um, when he saw it there was a lot of blood dripping at the time, you know, initially and we thought it might be something very serious so we, um, Chris got out his first aid pack and uh, put some of his training into action as a, a you know, lifeguard etc and some training and um, obviously we didn't want to touch any of the blood, we didn't have the gloves on and things, so we got his, his mate to, to hold the bandages against his foot. Um, but the, the driver was uh, just sort of shouting and, and pushing everyone away and no one wanted to be near him obviously because they were in shock and could see the blood really. Um, but it, it, had, it had stopped bleeding quite as heavily when we started to bandage, bandage it, so I knew it wasn't it wasn't going to be quite. It wasn't going to be that serious. It didn't look that serious, um, but you could see that there was a lot of damage to his heel because he'd been wearing flip flops and shorts, of course, and I'd been wearing full bike motocross boots with full padded jacket and trousers, so uh, and a helmet. So I came off, um, you know, a, a lot less worse than he did. Um, but anyway, we managed to flag down a, a bus, and then that drove off because it didn't have any room. And then we flagged down a truck. Um, with, a, with an open back and they pulled back the, the tarpaulin off the back and he and his friend got into the back and drove off and then we could actually follow them along and um, uh, but they were a long way ahead by the time we got the bike going and it just so happened that we got stopped by a police checkpoint just in the town where the, the hospital was because we didn't know where we were going and we were sort of still in shock and wonder whether you know when, whether we should keep going whether we should stop and report it it sounds crazy now but um, you know, a lot of the information about travelling is quite old and, you know, corrupt and dysfunctional police forces, you know, would might throw you in prison without thinking about it. Um, 
but the, this, this, uh, the Angolan police were very organised. They had people there in seconds. They had all their radios, and they were looking for us because people had said, you know, within minutes that, um, that some, you know, Western bikes, some white bikes had been involved in an accident. Someone had gone to hospital, so they were just following up. Uh, so I went off to hospital, and uh, I, you know, I didn't have a broken rib or anything, but it felt like it. So just bruised. Um, and a bruised elbow and small cuts, but nothing too major. So, um, so that was very lucky. And uh, after they'd taken a few details, and they, they asked Chris and Dan about what had happened, but they never asked me, uh, which I thought was a bit strange. But they said that we could just continue, and we told them where we were staying, and um, and they just let us go on our way, which I thought was um, which was thought was very even-handed. They didn't. There was no talk about locking us up or you know, interrogating me or assuming that, you know, just because I was on a, a Western bike, that I, you know, like on a European bike, that I shouldn't have been there and that I caused the accident. So overall, um, overall it wasn't too traumatic, although I was looking at, over my shoulder really in the next few days expecting, you know, to hear more about it, some sort of complaint or something. But, you know, so far, and now we're, we're out of the country, uh, you, know, you feel a bit more relaxed about it because you never quite know what's going to happen but hopefully and I did say you know to the guy before I left although he was high on morphine for his for having his foot stitched back up which is particularly gruesome um, that um, you know that I had spoken to the police and um, that hopefully it would all be sorted out um, so yeah so a bit stressful not what you needed especially if we're on a five-day visa so uh, but yeah um, yeah quite an adventure <laughs>